Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Probably won't be a long video, but who knows because this is a rant video. This isn't a current events. This isn't news. This isn't tips, tricks, or anything like that. It's just me that I've had something on my mind and I'm going to get on here and say it. So who knows how long it'll take. Uh, before I get started with that, I do want to let you know that for you Missouri folks, and I know a lot of you are Missouri people. I'm a Missouri guy and I know a lot of Missouri people listen to me. Uh, there is a live stream video being done tonight from another YouTube channel that you might be interested in. Now, they're not doing this on YouTube. That's the thing. They're going to be on another video platform called Odyssey. Um, and it's the Missouri Freedom Initiative. Many of you know what that organization is. Uh, they're, they're an organization we work with a lot here locally because they are very liberty-minded here in the state of Missouri. Anyways, they're doing a live stream tonight about an extremely important bill that has just recently been filed here in the state of Missouri, and that is a bill to make gold and silver legal tender in the state of Missouri. Uh, from my understanding, it it allows gold and silver to be used uh, in a transaction purposes. Uh, it, it forces the state of Missouri to invest a portion of their revenue into gold and silver, not fractional, but, you know, deposit repository gold and silver. Uh, it does appear to um, open the doors for Missouri to have its own currency, gold and silver backed currency, uh, or mint gold and silver. So this is a very, very important thing uh, that is happening here in Missouri. So if you're interested in listening to that live stream that will be broadcast here shortly, um, I'll leave a link in the description below to that Odyssey channel, and you can click on there and watch it. If you've never heard of Odyssey, it's, it's very much like YouTube. It's like YouTube and Rumble, a lot of these other platforms. Uh, you know, they host videos. It's, it works the same way. Uh, but I would encourage you to watch that because I, I think, I don't know for certain, I don't really have any inside knowledge. I just know that uh, that's what they're talking about, and that should be one that you should get involved in if you are from Missouri most especially. What I want to talk about is just something, it's just always digging in my craw, okay? <laughs> and what I mean by that is, is I, I guess to just put it bluntly, is the cognitive dissonance that, that exists. You know, as I, as I make these videos and I talk about all the stuff that's going on and the stuff that we need to be aware of and the, the things that are happening to showcase to you and, and to kind of help you have a timeline of how bad things are getting, where, where, we're, where we're going wrong, what direction we're headed. And, you know, that's, that's part of the reason that I talk about all the stuff that's going on in the world today on this channel. Uh, I still get people all the time, and I know many of you are going to say they're trolls, and they probably are, but many of them, I think, are legitimate. Um, and, and even if it's not the people that are commenting on videos, probably most of you, I would say, if not every one of you, have people in your lives, whether they're coworkers or friends or family, uh, that say the same thing, which is, things aren't really that bad. I mean, you know, things are okay where I'm at, you know? I mean, I, wh why are you acting like the world's ending, uh, you know? Uh, I go to the grocery store and there's still groceries there. You know, well, you know, sometimes the stores, the shelves are, you know, a little thin, but they're still there. Yeah, I know I'm paying a little bit more for stuff, but I still have money. I, I know, I know, you know, inflation is up, you know, uh, auto industry and, and, and mortgages and all this stuff. But you know what? I still have a job. I'm still making money. I'm still paying my bills, I'm still putting food, out, food on my table. I mean, I have less, you know, money in the end. I have less, less, you know, spendable money in the end but still i'm doing great and the world just seems to be functioning i mean you know if everything's going so bad then i mean why would they still be you know having football games on tv and if everything's going so bad why do we hear about these elites still buying properties and 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 making plans for their future this is what i call cognitive dissonance and <laughs> i'm a firm believer that if we found out tomorrow that the planet was going to be destroyed by an asteroid or a meteor, uh, there would be a lot of people that would just, oh well, you know, let's keep going on with our lives. In fact, there was a movie made recently. Um, I'm not saying that you should watch the movie, but it's actually kind of showcases, it's kind of a dark comedy that showcases what uh, Americans are probably really like. And I think that's what we've seen through all of this the last two or three years of stuff that no matter how bad things are getting, there's still so many people that are just not getting it. 
and they, they are continually convincing themselves and trying to convince you that the world isn't really falling apart, that things aren't really that bad. And I, I always ask people, well, do you remember what it was like three, four, five years ago? Do you remember uh, when we didn't have to worry about, you know, inflation? Do you remember when we weren't worried about being forced to not work or to stay home uh, or put something in our bodies? Do you remember when there was a lot less crime? Uh, do you remember when um, there wasn't the possibility of wars? Uh, do you remember when there, there wasn't stuff in the news talking about, you know, an economic collapse or a dollar collapse or a stock market collapse? Uh, do you remember uh, when there wasn't constant talk of some kind of globalist agenda that's, that's taking everything over? Uh, if you can remember that, that really wasn't that long ago. I mean, it wasn't ancient history. It wasn't like, oh, well, back when I was a kid, it was like this. No, it was back two or three or four years ago, it was like this. Now, I know what many of you are going to say. This globalist agenda has been going on a long time, and you're absolutely right. I mean... I started becoming aware of it when I was around 18 or 19 uh, and started getting involved in various organizations, tried to educate people in various different ways, you know, 25 plus years ago. So um, I've been aware of it a long time and it's been around even longer. OK, so this is this is nothing new. I mean, you could you could easily go back to the, you know, 1913, 1933. You could go back even further than that and find ample evidence that there's been this kind of globalist cabal uh, that's trying to take us over, okay? So that's not new. What is new is that it's become kind of in the forefront. They're, they're being very blatant and open about it. They're not hiding their agenda anymore. Um, this stuff was done back in the 60s and the 70s and 80s and 90s, but it was done in secrecy. And you really had to dig around to find out about it. I mean, you really had to, to search. Now, and it's not just because of the Internet, it's not because we can find this stuff easily for the Internet. That has been happening for the last decade, where it's been easier to find this stuff and to share it. But what's been happening in the last couple of years is different. What's been happening in the last couple of years is that they're not hiding it anymore. They're saying these things right out in the open. They are doing these things out in the open, and they're blatantly, openly saying why they're doing them. They're not trying to hide their agenda any longer. And so that what that tells me is, is that number one, they're getting pretty close to fully implementing or at least implementing enough of their globalist agenda. And number two, they feel that the public, whether it's the American public, the Western public, or just global public, is has been conditioned enough, or at least enough of them have been conditioned enough that they will accept this and that they will move on. Um, we are so caught up in the divisiveness of politics, uh, people constantly trying to argue that this party is better than this party or this candidate's better than this candidate. And honestly, there's no evidence of either candidate or either party actually being better. There's no evidence that, that you know, the country has really uh, taken a, a 180 uh, when one president was here versus the other. We've, we've constantly, you know, there's, there's one thing that you can rest assured that regardless of the president, the government continues to grow under their power. They go into more debt, they spend more, and just the overall growth of government continues to increase. I can't remember any um, president in at least the last 100 years um, that presided over a government that shrunk during the time of their tenure. I, I don't, if, if there are, please, please correct me because I want to know. Uh, but I'm not aware of any. Uh, you know, there's some that spend more than others, and there's some that kind of balance the budget. But how many of them actually spend a lot less? How many of them say, hey, you know what, we saved the country this many billion dollars this year? Hey, you know, we, we put the country back on track on the gold standard, or, you know, we stopped this, this invasive Big Brother programs, uh, ended the, the Department of Homeland Security or the Department of Education. I mean, they talk about these things, but then when they get into office, they don't. And it's the same way with other stuff. You know, we, we're constantly convincing ourselves that these big corporations aren't really that bad. You know, they're just out to make a buck like everybody else, and they're trying to sell us a product and make a buck. And we, you know, as a people, as a, as a broad stroke of, of people, uh, we convince ourselves that they're not really that bad. 
that they're they're not re- they don't really have an agenda against us. They don't really have an agenda that's globalist. These companies, these big, you know, multinational mega corporations, they're just out there to make money. No, they they are out there to make money. I mean, that's certainly true. But they're also out there to take over our lives. They're out there to to change the direction of humanity uh, because they feel that they have this godlike, you know. Uh, ability to do that and and this godlike duty to do that to take care of humanity and, and make us better than what we are uh, you know you can you can argue and argue that well you know you're just being conspiracy theory when it comes to food and the chemtrails and the stuff they put in the water and the stuff they put in our body but the fact is is that there's plenty of evidence showcasing that all this stuff actually does happening Uh, It's the same way with the money right now, the money systems. There's plenty of evidence to indicate that we are most definitely headed down a very rapid, at a fast pace, path of CBDC. Uh, There's there's plenty of evidence to indicate that there is a, a one world government trying to be formed. Uh, there's there's lots of evidence that shows that we are probably into those last days. It doesn't mean it's absolute and conclusive, but there definitely is a lot of evidence. And so for those people out there that want to continue to deny, folks, they're always going to be that way. Like I said, if, if it, it came out on the news or if it was on the Internet or if there was some kind of pr- you know provable evidence that the Earth was about to be struck by some asteroid, or, or some other massive disaster, I think a lot of people would either ignore it, convince themselves that it's fake news, or that it's not that important, or that there's nothing they can do about it, so they must just keep on living their normal lives. Many years ago, I ran for a local office. It wasn't anything of a big deal. You know, I, I was an independent. Um, you know, I was up against a Republican and Democrat, and I assure you, I, you know, I, I didn't really have a chance of winning because I didn't take any campaign donations. It was all just self-funded. So anyways, the point is, is that um, I used it as, a, as a, a platform to just educate people. Someone advised me, said, hey, you know, if you're just able to get your name on the ballot, that'll open doors for you that you're able to educate people. So I did that. And I did. I talked to many thousands of people over a six-month period of time. And you know what? The vast majority of people that I spoke with And I would tell them all this stuff that's going on. And this is here in southern Missouri, you know, very conservative area. Uh, You know, so good to talk to people like that because, you know, they're going to open up typically a little bit more. And the vast majority of the people that I spoke to about, you know, things like the Federal Reserve and these one world global government and all this kind of stuff, they would all nod their head and say, yeah, that sounds like that's what they're doing. I don't doubt it. Yep. I've heard of that. Yep. It's that's probably happening. But you know what? There's just nothing we can do about it. There's just not a thing we can do about it. I mean, we just we just have to keep on going to work and paying our bills because there's nothing we can do about it. Um, they would tell me all the time, you know what? You don't have a chance of getting elected. You're a good guy, and I bet you're better than the other two that's running for office, and I'd rather have you representing me. But you don't have a chance of getting elected. And I'd say, yeah, if everyone says that, I won't. But if everyone that says that votes for me, then I would have a chance. And see, that's the problem, and that's part of the mental conditioning, the psychological conditioning that's been going on in this country for a very long time uh, through education, public education, through media, and now through social media, and probably through all the chemicals that they've put into our body and that we ingest into our body. Uh, I think all of it kind of comes together, and we've we've grown to be this big, complacent, lazy, comfortable society. And we're not willing to go out there and put any risk in our lives so that we can have a better lifestyle. We're we're content where we're at, and and that's that cognitive dissonance, that belief that that. Um, the danger that's ahead of us isn't that bad or isn't real and if we just stay where we're at we'll be all right and that's not the case people will continue believing this as they're being rounded up people will continue to believe this as all their money is taken away and they're given some digital currency that controls their every aspect of their life people will continue to believe this as they turn in their firearms and they turn in their combustion engines uh, and they're taken off of their land uh, and they're forced into a small mega city smart city little apartments people will continue to believe that things really aren't that bad and that's very unfortunate so you know there are just going to be people that we're not going to win over. I mean, that's just that's just the truth. There's just certain people that are never going to wake up 
and realize this. And I hate that. I wish everyone would. Uh, even if you go back a couple of hundred or more years ago to the founding of this nation, um, approximately, at least from the research that I've done, only about 11% or so of the colonists were even for the revolution and supported it in some type of way. And of course, as many of you know, only about 3% actually uh, partook in the Revolutionary War that won our freedom from uh, Great Britain. So it was really a small number. It wasn't an overwhelming majority of colonists that were willing to take on and fight um, a, the, the world's biggest and best army at the time. Uh, it was really a fairly small amount, and I suspect that's the case today in probably even smaller numbers. Um, but the point is, is that there's a lot of people that's going to be against this. It's that kind of, um, you know, human farming kind of concept that there are going to be people that will fight you to keep them on the farm. You know, when you try to jump the fence and get away, instead of the other people realizing that you're fighting for freedom and that they try to help you so they can have freedom too, they're going to fight you to keep you from getting freedom because they're so convinced that, um, you know, the Stockholm Syndrome, they're so convinced that the farm, the prison that they're at, is so much better than what else is out there. And so this is the place that we're at today. And so as you're continuing to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually, and you have all these people around you that are constantly telling you that there's nothing to fear, that you're overreacting, that it's not really that bad. I mean, that we're, we still have freedom. We're still better than some countries. We still have more food than other people. Uh, this is going to continue to happen. And even as the doors of the ark start to close and the rain is pouring down, there's probably still going to be people that believe that they're going to be saved or that everything's going to be okay in the long run. Don't let those people drag you down. I mean, of course, you do the best you can to wake people up, the family and the friends and the loved ones. Um, but in the end, you can't save everyone. And that's a real sad aspect of this. But remember the people that you can save. Remember the people that you are waking up. And remember your own family that you have a duty to take care of. And so continue to do that, folks. Continue preparing mentally, physically, and spiritually, getting your houses in order, because uh, while the apocalypse hasn't happened yet, there are so many markers out there, uh, little points of information that are telling us that these actions are starting to take place, that, that we are in that kind of motion, that direction towards uh, all of these evil, globalist, uh, anti-liberty, anti-freedom agendas that are happening, we are headed that direction. And so you have to do what you can to get your place, your family, your responsibilities in order. And keep doing that and do not get discouraged, folks. Uh, get your houses in order. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.